Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 9, Envelopes, part 2. So first, what is the Learn With Me series? The Learn With Me series is a series where you follow my end-to-end -end process of learning to get the best out of a synthesizer. In this case, it is the Ashen Sound Machines Hydrosynth Explorer. This is a compact, 8-voice digital synthesizer with polyphonic aftertouch, macro controls on the front panel, and pretty good build quality and I think represents pretty good value. So far I've described the synthesizer's architecture, I've described the control paradigm and my general thoughts on the synth, we've looked at the oscillators, the mutants, which are audio effects applied to the oscillators, we've looked at the filter and we've looked at an envelope. In particular we've enumerated the features of the envelope. What I'd like to do today is to spend a little time, instead of enumerating features, trying to apply them to something that is a little bit more interesting and hopefully uses some of those features. So first, an init patch. So I had a quick think about what I'd like to do, and I quite enjoyed that plucky sound that I used last time, but I thought it would be interesting to combine that with uh, a looping envelope. So. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to have a similar sort of sound, but I only had something one second long. Instead, I'm going to set an eight second decay time and an eight second release time. And I probably don't need anything in the way of attack, but uh, I'm just going to leave it there. I feel like that trail is, is lasting a little bit too long, so I'm going to increase the exponential curvature here to, let's see, see what 46 sounds like. So I think that's sounding better. The default routing then is from the amplitude envelope, envelope 2, to the amplifier. You can't adjust the amount to which this happens, it's always 100% enabled. What you can do, however, is you can specify a velocity multiplier that is applied to the envelope. So what this means is that when your velocity is 100%, if this multiplier is zero, there is none of the maximum level. Uh, there's an interval near the maximum level which will control how high the envelope can peak. When this is set to zero, there is zero space. So whatever velocity you play will always hit that level. As this number increases, there becomes a larger and larger interval, which is controlled by velocity, where minimum velocity is the bottom of that interval and maximum is the top to set how high the envelope goes. So this controls the difference in level between the loudest and the quietest notes. So when this is a zero, there's no velocity sensitivity. So let's set it to, uh, let's say 30. It's possible to set these negatively, which means when you press the note harder, the envelope, um, it's the inverse um, behavior. So the same interval happens, but it's scaled backwards. So that means the harder you press, the lower the peak of the envelope is. So so you can hear two quite different amplitude levels going on there. So the thing that I would like to use this with then is to make a second envelope. So how long was this? Eight seconds. So let's make a half a second long envelope here with a similar profile. Um, it's fine, let's set that to zero. Just like last time I added a little bit of attack. I don't think I need any decay, and I think that's probably fine, but I might like this to be a bit more aggressive, even more so than the other envelope. So now what I'm doing here is, unlike the amplifier, which is controlled entirely by that envelope, in other words, when the envelope is at zero, the amplifier is at zero, the filter does not by default, neither of them, utilize the envelope. So I have two parameters here. One of them specifies how much 
the cutoff will be opened by the envelope. So when this is set to 100% and the cutoff is set to zero, we will see a full cutoff range occurring. And just like the velocity sensitivity setting on the amplifier, we can specify a velocity sensitivity setting here, which works in exactly the same sense. The difference being that instead of that happening near this 100% level, it only happens near the 100% level if the envelope is set to maximum, the envelope amount is set to maximum. So to illustrate, let's set the envelope amount to maximum. Let's close the filter cutoff entirely. So you can see because this filter, this envelope is very short, what's happening is the envelope is playing entirely and the cutoff is returning to zero. So I can also choose to turn this down, let's say to 32, that's 50% level, and set this to somewhere near 50%. So you can hear the pluck. But there is a little bit of tone that remains that's coming through the filter. So I might turn this up a little bit and bring some velocity sensitivity in. Just adding a little bit of a little bit of filter drive to add some more color. But now, for what I was actually interested in doing here, um, for envelope one, well, it's possible for me to loop this. So what that's going to mean is it's going to play the attack, hold is zero, and the decay, and then it's going to play that over and over again. I can specify a number of loops. By default, it plays once, so I can specify two. So pluck, pluck. I can set infinity. I can probably hear about 14, or I can specify, I can specify exactly 14. I could also, for example, change the release on the amplifier envelope. So this will mean if I release, because presently the envelopes basically run the same amount of time, whether I release or not. But now, if I release it quickly, we don't hear the repeat. So the repeats will only continue while the note is held. I slightly misstated that just then. But because the release is shorter, we hear much less of that ongoing tone after the note is released. So this is really all I wanted to demonstrate today. I think once we introduce the LFOs and once we come back to designing sounds, we will utilize some more of these features. But for now, I think we have something which is interestingly rhythmic, um, might be interesting to have a delay against this. So, the delay adds this additional repeat. It might be interesting to do something a little more offbeat for it, so let's try. So that offbeat rhythm combined with this looping envelope it gives us a rhythmic variation
without actually having to play that rhythm in, and it has this other envelope which is applying over it. So I hope this illustrates that even without diving into the mod matrix and using the basic features that are directly accessible from the envelopes, we have some interesting tombol capacity. Let's add ourselves a little, a little light delay. A little stereo. I think flanger might work. Okay, so I think that goes to illustrate everything I wanted to illustrate. Let's play a little bit with this patch and hopefully come back next episode, probably to look at the LFOs and all the features that they offer. And then we can try and combine the envelopes and LFOs and other features into something a little bit more complex. So for now, here we go. Hopefully you've been enjoying this series, hopefully you enjoyed this episode, but most importantly I'd like to say thank you very much for being here today, and goodbye!